Hello everyone, my name is Rishita Chinta and I'm studying Farm D third year in Malibu Pharmacy College and my topic for today is Thalidomide. So Thalidomide, basically it's history. Thalidomide introduced as a sedative drug in the late 1950s and it is a drug that was developed in the 1950s by the West German pharmaceutical company Chemie Granenthal GmbH in 1956 and it was developed by Swiss pharmaceutical company CIBA in 1953. It was found to act as an effective tranquilizer, that is, it reduces tension or anxiety, and painkiller as it was proclaimed as a wonder drug for insomnia, cough, cold, and headaches. It was found to be an effective antiemetic which had an inhibitory effect on morning sickness, and so thousands of pregnant women took the drug to undergo to relieve their symptoms. An antiemetic is basically the one that prevents vomiting, so this is why basically women use this drug to relieve their symptoms. And the basic introduction. It was hailed as a wonder drug that provided a safe and sound sleep. However, the drug was also found to cure morning sickness in pregnant women and it was available as OTC drug, that is, it was available over the counter. The drug was initially advertised as a sedative which would allow users to undergo a deep sleep in the absence of a hangover and with a reduced risk of developing drug dependency. At the time, basic testing was done on the drug and was considered not to have any toxic effects on humans. So when they initially tested, they did not see any effects, teratogenic effects or any other effects in this drug. However, unlike today's level of rigorous testing, the drug was not analyzed for any potentially dangerous teratogenic effects. Teratogenic, teratogenic effects are basically the one that causes developmental malformation. So this was not found earlier. Following its release, the drug became popular as a morning sickness remedy for pregnant women due to its antiemetic effects. And this increase is used for pregnant women was aided by the fact that the drug could be obtained without any prescription and it was available. As we have seen that it is it was available over the counter and was easy for women and affordable. So they usually use this drug. So these two doctors are the ones who actually made a change in the world. So William Griffith McBride was an Australian obstetrician. He published a letter on the teratogenicity of thalidomide following the findings of midwife called Pat Sparrow, which resulted in the reduction of the number of drugs prescribed during pregnancy. And Dr. Widukind Lenz was a distinguished German pediatrician, medical geneticist and a dysmorphologist who was among the first rec to recognize the thalidomide syndrome in 1961 and alert the world to the dangers of limb and other malformations due to the mother's exposure to this drug during pregnancy. So basically both of these doctors were the one who, had, who made a great impact on the society and they actually told us the effects of thalidomide, how it actually affected the mother and the baby and the fetus. So next is the class and category of thalidomide. Thalidomide is in the class of medications called immunomodulatory agents. So basically immunomodulatory agents are those that stimulate or suppress the immune system. It treats multiple myeloma by strengthening the immune system to fight cancer cells. It treats ENL that is erythema nodosum leprosum ENL by blocking the action of certain natural substances that cause swelling. So here below we can see this box, the basic drug categories of thalidomide, like how they actually act. So they are acids, that is carboxylic, they are imides and they are inducers, cytochrome P450 inducers. Then we have angiogenesis inhibitors, they are immunological factors, immunomodulatory agents and we have anti-infective that is isoindoles and antineoplastic agents that acts as leprostatic agents. So we have different types of drug categories of thalidomide as to how they are and how they act are, are they inducers or inhibitors and so on. The next is the source of thalidomide that is basically the chemistry of thalidomide. Thalidomide and thalamidoglutaramide it consists of ring structure with an asymmetric carbon in the glutaramide ring exists as an equal mixture of SNR and enantiomers respectively. So these enantiomers rapidly get interconverted under physiological conditions. So if there is any presence of physiological conditions, there is quick physiological change and it gets interconverted. 
Thalidomide is sparingly soluble in water and ethanol, which to date has prevented its availability as an intravenous formulation. On the right side, we can see the actual picture of this, how there are asymmetric carbon in the glut glutaramide ring. So now in this particular picture on the left side, we can see how there is a change in R and S enantiomers basically due to the presence of physiological activity that is pH. So we can see that R, it actually acts as a sedative. So due to the presence of pH, that is a physiological activity, so there's instant change, rapid interconversion we can see and then it changes to S, S enantiomer and this potentially inhibits the release of TNF alpha and it is the teratogenic form of thalidomide. So this is basically how it actually changes. So this is the image which can give us a clear picture as to how it actually works. So next, this is the brand names of thalidomide. So on the left side, we can see different names that is thalidomide, selgin, thalidomide. So the, those are the brand names and we can see the dosage that is basically capsule and different strengths that is 50, 150, 100, 200 and so on. And on the right side, we can basically see the brand names which are basically used in India which are used here in our different hospitals and healthcare facilities. So all the one is Oncothel, Thalimide, Thangio, Thalide, Thalimax. So these are the different types of brand names used in different hospitals and places like Dr. Reddy's, United Biotech, as it is given, we can see, and different doses, dosage, that is Thalide, or whatever, 50 mg, 100, 200, and so on. So next is the therapeutic uses of Thalidomide. So FDA approved, it actually basically approved ENL multiple myeloma, that is erythema nodosum leprosum myeloma, and it basically is used in the treatment of myelodysplastic syndrome and antineoplastic effects, that is AIDS-related Kaposi sarcoma. And we have potential uses, that is autoimmune conditions like RA, rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing splondylitis, and inflammatory bowel disease. And we have cachexia and weight loss and HIV that is based on HIV associated tuberculosis, cancer cachexia and then we have dermatological conditions that is discoid lupus erythematosus, actinic prurigo, pyoderma gangrenosum. So actinic prurigo is basically itchiness caused in the skin. So this is basically how it helps in dermatological condition and other various conditions as well. So this is the basic uses of thalidomide. And then we have the mechanism of action. So available data from in vitro studies and preliminary clinical trials basically suggested, suggest that the immunological effects on this compound can vary substantially under different conditions. So the, there are basic different types of effects of thalidomide on different conditions. So, but it may be related to suppression of excessive tumor necrosis and production and a down modulation of selected cell surface adhesion molecules involved in leukocyte migration. For example, there's a basic example that when there's an administration of thalidomide, there's been reported a decrease in circulating levels of TNF-A in patients with ENL. However, it has also been shown to increase plasma TNF-A levels in HIV seropositive patients as cancer treatment. The drug may act as a VEGF inhibitor, that is, it acts as a vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitor. So basically, we can actually see how it actually acts substantially different in different conditions. So this is the mechanism of action. We can see thalidomide, it goes to the molecule, molecular targets directly or uh, in a product which is broken down. So it goes to the target, for example, cereblon or anything else. So and with, after that, it, there's an inhibition of new blood vessel formation. And then there is increase in reactive oxidative species and cell death. And then we have organ tissue development defect and due to which there is secondary cell induction defects. So there's innovation and muscle pattern failure. So this is the basic way how this, the mechanism of action of thalidomide basically works. The proposed mechanism of actions, so it basically enhances the immune system, effector cells and suppresses angiogenesis. Angiogenesis, what is angiogenesis? Basically, it is the development of new blood vessels. So it suppresses angiogenesis, as we've seen before here in this slide. There's inhibition of new blood vessel formation. And then the fourth point is it interferes with the bone marrow, stromal cell, malignant plasma cell. And the third one is it inhibits various cytokine mediators. So this is basically, basically the mechanism of action of thalidomide. So in this image, it clearly sums up each and everything what we have 
seen on the on the mechanism of action of thalidomide in this image we can see how it actually acts on the cells and how it actually causes teratogenic effects we can see how thalidomide here acts on nk cells stromal cells and all and how it actually like increases or decreases in vegf and various things that are done so this image actually is pretty much sums up what we have learned earlier and it is an easy way of explanation and next this is the mechanism of action like as to how it actually acts the target protein and action so basically the organism is obviously human here so there's a target like for example protein cerebellin and its action is inhibitor tnf factor it acts as an inhibitor nuclear factor antagonist dna it acts in intercalation what is intercalation it is the insertion of molecule then we have prostaglandin it acts as an antagonist alpha acid acts as a binder so there are different types of target molecules and different types of uh, actions as to how it actually acts so next is pharmacokinetics so the tmax is 2.9 to 5.7 hours and the metabolism so it is basically metabolized through a non enzymatic pathway and it undergoes spontaneous hydrolysis in the blood and in the tissues so hepatic that is cyp34a then on non enzymatic degradation end product is thalic acid and pharmacokinetics based on absorption and elimination so basically it is absorbed by the git and not affected by food consumption and it is eliminated from the body in about 5 to 7 hours not through feces only a very small amount is metabolized by cytochrome p450 so this is the basic pharmacological properties of thalidomide and it is anxiolytic antiemetic and anti inflammatory and cytokine anxiolytic is basically the one which reduces anxiety and antiemetic as we have known it prevents vomiting anti inflammatory and cytokine modulatory properties and this is the basic side effects of thalidomide as you see there are many common side effects like drowsiness muscle weakness confusion tremors loss of appetite and many more these are the basic side effects of thalidomide and the other side effects of thalidomide are sensitivity to light slow heart rate lower high blood pressure that is hypotension or hypertension and severe side effects of thalidomide also include severe nerve damage which may be permanent which occur during the treatment or after the treatment has completely stopped so these symptoms include numbness tingling pain burning in the feet or hands muscle weakness or cramps and feeling a tightness in the feet so this is the basic side effects and the adverse effects of thalidomide there are many as we can see fatigue hypocalcemia dyspnea anorexia anxiety and many more so basically these are based on the per, the percentages given as to how adverse they are so we can see the first two basically that is fatigue and hypocalcemia based on the percentage that is 79% and 72% adverse so this is the main, uh, main adverse effects of thalidomide and the dosage form is basically capsules as we can see in the picture this is thalid thalomid so this is the brand name and this is the dosage form that is capsule we can see it's written 14 capsules and 50 mg and there are different types of uh, dosage form dosage forms which can be given that is 50 mg 100 mg 150 and 200 and so on and next is the route of administration the so administration of thalidomide that is basically oral administration it is administered orally it is we can take it with water at bedtime at least 1 hour after evening meal and if you are taking thalidomide to treat enl that is erythema nodosum leprosum your doctor may tell you to take it more than once a day at least 1 hour before your meals so this is the contraindication and this is basically the black box warning for the contraindications of thalidomide so it causes embryo fetal toxicity if taken during pregnancy thalidomide can cause severe birth defects or embryo fetal death as you can see on the pictures in the given in the right and left there are the images which actually show how teratogenic effects are caused by thalidomide and never prescribe for females who are pregnant or who, who who could be pregnant while taking the drug and even a single dose one capsule regardless of the strength be it 50 mg 100 mg or 150 or whatever if that is taken by a pregnant woman during her pregnancy it can cause severe birth defects as you can see in the image how severely the baby is affected by taking thalidomide if the if the mother is taking thalidomide and pregnancy must be excluded before initiating the treatment and prevents pregnancy after the use of two reliable contraceptive methods 
and this is basically the interactions of thalidomide and there are drug drug interactions and food interactions and drug drug interactions there are total of 709 drugs that actually interact with thalidomide so basically 157 are the major drug interactions and 552 are the moderate drug interactions and in food interactions there is basically we need to avoid alcohol that is ingestion alcohol ingestion of alcohol may increase the drowsiness caused by thalidomide and we are, it should be taken after a meal and wait at least 1 hour after eating before taking thalidomide and as there are many drug drug interactions these are basically some of few drugs which actually in, interact with thalidomide so in clonidine it either increases the toxicity or the other of pharmacodynamic dynamic synergism so when it is given with thalidomide we can avoid or use an alternative drug and abseximab it in, the risk or severity of bleeding can be increased when it is actually combined with thalidomide and we have acetat acetolamide and it increases the cns depressant activity and adalimumab the metabolism of thalidomide can be increased when it is given with adalimumab so the precautions or the basic counseling points which can be given to the patient it basically requires pregnancy test in most of the cases and education about the drug is necessarily required the drug may enter the semen and the men could affect the female partner so this is how it actually is excreted in men and it affects both the men and women so to avoid this the thalidomide's marketing and use is restricted through the mandatory system for thalidomide education and prescribing safety that is steps this particular program is run to avoid this kind of activity and this unique system of monitoring it oversees the prescribing dispensing and dosing of thalidomide so this is basically a small quiz based on what we have learned before as to how well we have learned the disease so the first question is in which of the following conditions thalidomide might be used options are myocardial infarction erythema nodosum leprosum vernix encephalopathy and epilepsy as we all have learned till now the answer is erythema nodosum lepros leprosum as it has been used in enl basically so the second question is thalidomide is not used in which condition so hiv related nephropathy erythema nodosum leprosum abscess ulcer and beckett's disease so basically it is not used in abscess ulcer so the third question is thalidomide can be metabolized through which pathway as you've seen in the earlier we have seen the metabolic activity so how it is actually metabolized through which pathway anabolic enzymatic non enzymatic and catabolic so the answer is non enzymatic pathway as you seen in the mechanism of action how it was actually done and the fourth question is thalidomide can be given parenterally is it true or false it is false as you've seen it is actually given only orally and the last question is immunomodulatory sedative drug used in management of some forms of leprosy also effective in managing skin manifestations of lupus erythematosus which drug can be given tacrolimus cyclophosphamide thalidomide or bupropion so basically thalidomide is a drug which can be given and this is the end of the quiz and end of my presentation i hope all of you have understood a little bit about thalidomide and you've got a gist as to how it is its effects and basic action and how it actually affects the body and i hope you all have understood it thank you